did she have violations uh, of the uh, of the SCRAM program? Was she compliant? Uh, no, she had multiple violations. Okay, and um, like a couple violations. Uh, um, <clears throat> I can. We've got five alcohol consumption events and twenty seven tamper events. Um, some of the tamper events were tampers with alcohol um, because SCRAM, if there's a tamper involved and alcohol, they categorize it as a tamper because they will not confirm an alcohol consumption with a tamper. Today in Judge Webster's court, we have a warrant to show cause hearing due to 27 SCRAM tether violations. A SCRAM tether is an ankle device that monitors your blood alcohol content. This device also detects when the user tries tampering with it. Thank you for watching and let's get into the video. And now let's take up uh, 2021 TR 1470, State of Kansas versus Megan Jane Barnett. Ms. Barnett, if you want to unmute. Please announce appearances. Amber Norris for the state. Your Honor, Darren Patterson appear on behalf of Megan Barnett. Miss Barnett does appear via Zoom audio visual. Judge, this is a warrant to show cause. I have spoke with Miss Barnett about that warrant to show cause, as well as actually had a video conference <laughs> with her therapist. How'd you take it off? Judge, I'm asking at this time for a continuance so that I can get documents from her therapist, as well as the treatment progress, as well as other information about um, the recommendations that are being given. Um, so I'd ask for a continuance, Your Honor. Well, first order of business, I'm very curious about what Ms. Barnett appears to be trying to hide. Uh, first, she blurs her background, and I see people, several people scampering into the room Judge, behind her. She, she's at a, they shut the door. Uh, Judge, what, she's at Miracles. She's living at Miracles currently. So there is business going on around her, Judge. She, her th I think she's in her therapist room. Okay. And I saw her eating, having a bunch of chips, and we don't normally eat in, eat in court. And then what is that you have on your shirt? Is that a KKK or a Kiss? Uh, it's, it's Kiss. The band? Okay. Well, I just, I was finding one thing after another curious that was calling attention to you. Um, and then you were having conversation with someone after the, they scurried back and forth and shut the door behind you. So I can't figure out how to show myself on the computer. So she was helping me. It's her laptop. It's my staff's laptop. Well, I've seen you very clearly throughout. I just haven't been paying much okay. attention. So I don't know where I'm at on the screen. Sorry. You're fine. Miss uh, Donovan, are you her probation officer? I am, Your Honor. And when did you ask first for this revocation of probation? This was filed back in December, Your Honor, um, of 2022. Uh, let's see. The show cause was actually filed December 20th of 2022. And the got allegations? And I will mention that I did file an addendum to this warrant um, just last week, which I did forward to all parties. Uh, but the, the violations are that she uh, failed to remain compliant with SCRAM and failed to refrain from possessing or consuming alcohol um, as per her SCRAM violation reports. So those were the initial violations back in December. As I said, I filed an addendum as there have been multiple further violations that share need to be addressed. Us. Share those with us. I do remember seeing that, but if you share those with us. Um, yeah, the, yeah, I am objecting to the addendum you have copies of it, do you not? She did file it. Judge, I would tell a court that it's based upon hearsay unless there's an affidavit filed by the officer in Wichita. It would not be admissible under the statutes. 
does she not sign a contract allowing that information when she asks for supervision? She's the one that asks for supervision in Sedgwick County. Ms. Donovan, do we not make take steps to avoid this kind of an objection? Your Honor, uh, she was not being supervised on courtesy supervision. She was uh, more recently placed on supervision in Sedgwick County. So they have been supervising her. This case has not been transferred to them as she is pending a revocation in Sedgwick County, um, which I believe might be today also. In addition to this uh, revocation hearing, so therefore um, we haven't transferred the case yet, but we are communicating they are providing information on their end regarding violations, and I am keeping them apprised on this end as well. All right, so you're making a, a hearsay objection, Mr. Patterson, that you don't think she's going to have the folks with firsthand knowledge able to be here to make testimony. Is that what you're objecting about? It is a hearsay objection, Your Honor, yes, and there is a I guess a way around that objection under the, the uh, statutes concerning probation violations have an affidavit completed and submitted. I have not seen an affidavit. Ms. Donovan, do we have an affidavit? I do not have an affidavit, Your Honor. I have signed statements <clears throat> from the defendants on okay. some of these violations. All right. Which ones do you have? What is she, uh, uh, which ones do you have signed statements for? So um, on February 6th of 2023, which is listed in the addendum, uh, the defendant's uh, BAT result was positive for alcohol of 0.178. And she did sign an admission of alcohol usage, uh, which I do have. AT, excuse me, you said an ATV? A BAT, a breath a alcohol BAT. test, Your Honor. She did blow positive for alcohol that day. And I do have the signed statement um, that the CSO from Cedric County did forward um, with that information. Again, the defendant did sign it. Also on uh, March 3rd, um, the defendant's UA result in Cedric County was positive for cocaine and her BAT result was again positive for alcohol. Uh, with a 0 .048 reading. Again, she did sign an admission and acknowledge the positive result. Okay. All right. So does she wish an evidentiary hearing, Ms. Patterson, Mr. Patterson? At this time, I'm denying the request for a continuance. This has gone on long enough. We need to proceed. Judge, um, I would ask to talk to my client, and I believe uh, the counselor is present, so I'll probably call the counselor at the end of this hearing, but uh, if I could talk to my client first, Judge. Certainly. If we can have a breakout room, and when you're doing that, I'll probably take up someone else. I'll do that now, Judge. Thank you, Savannah. And Jackson will now be back on the record if Mr. Patterson is ready. In 2021, TR 1470, all parties as before, State of Kansas versus Megan Jane Barnett. Uh, Mr. Patterson, does your client wish an evidentiary hearing on this motion to revoke probation? Yes, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Norris, you may call your first witness. Um, Your Honor, uh, State would call Christine Donovan. Ms. Donovan, do you solemnly swear? The testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, God. I do. Thank you. Please proceed, Ms. Norris. Uh, please state your name and occupation for the record. Christine Donovan. I'm a court service officer in Butler County. And how long have you been supervising uh, Ms. Uh, Barnett? Uh, since she was placed on probation on September 20th of 2021. And have you previously done a, a request of revocation in, uh, for her case? Yes, this is a second request for revocation. She was reinstated on probation previously. Um, 
Well, Sorry, I'm looking for that date. That was on July 11th of 2022. Uh, she was ordered to serve 48 hours in the Butler County Jail. And after serving that time, placed back on probation. And um, probation was extended for 12 months. Okay. And then you said that was in July of 2022? Yes. Okay. And uh, you've been uh, supervising her since that date? Yes. And uh, what sort of issues uh, were you having with Miss uh, Barnett that caused you to request another revocation? Uh, the defendant uh, had violations with her scram. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay objection. Response, Ms. Norris? Um, Your Honor, I wasn't actually going to have her go into the specifics, um, but I, I do know that there is no one from SCRAM that's necessarily present uh, here today uh, regarding uh, specifics on violations. But um, I do believe that Ms. Donovan can speak to the fact that she was on that as part of probation, et cetera. Ms. Donovan, what... Uh... What uh, signed information or releases do you have from the defendant with the scram? Uh, Your Honor, they have been, while she was on scram, they had been communicating with me regularly regarding non-compliance issues. I can't object. I don't think there's any release that's going to get around a hearsay objection and evidentiary yes. objection. Well, Mr. Patterson, they are required to give reports to the court. I, I agree, Ms. Judge. Donovan is my agent. And Judge, again, I don't know how you get around hearsay objections unless there's a witness present to testify or if there's an affidavit that would uh, uh, allow this to proceed on a probation violation. Ms. Donovan, do you have what kind of reports do you have from the uh, Scram people. Your Honor, they forwarded um, reports regarding the tampers and the alcohol violations. Um, they are, are graphs regarding those violations and how they occurred. Um, again, something they would probably be able to attest to. And these are documents that you receive and keep as a records, official records custodian in this file? Yes. Well, I would say that these records, records are part of the official record and she's custodian of them. And as such, they should be an exception to the hearsay, Mr. President. I, I would ask for further argument, Judge. Go ahead. Judge, and I guess... Um, as a way of voir dire, I would suggest that if Ms. Donovan was to testify, she would testify that these are not records that she keeps in her regular um, course of business. Specifically, the actual scram documentation, the scram uh, that uh, the scram uh, reports that these are reports that are kept in the regular course of business from the 13th traditional electronic monitoring that Miss um, Donovan merely receives copies, but that's not a hearsay workaround without having somebody to establish that those records were kept in the regular course of business, that the foundation is laid for them, and then they would come in. Um, it, it's almost hearsay upon hearsay at this point. So um, without uh, um, the hearsay being cured, Judge, I don't believe there's any way around it. Well, let me just ask uh, Ms. Norris or Ms. Donovan, can you get somebody from the SCRAM on here in a reasonable period of time? Um, Your Honor, I have someone in my office contacting um, Kelsey at, uh, at the monitoring you. office to see whether okay. or not uh, she would be available um, at this time. All right. So we'll come back to that. Ms. Donovan, uh, other than the scram, are you able to proceed, Ms. Norris, and try to do, I, I think you're kind of multitasking there. Are you able to proceed with your questioning of Ms. Donovan 
skipping over that, but coming back if you get the information you're looking for? Um, yes, Your Honor, I, be I believe that we, we, we have some additional information. Um, she was placed back on probation in, on January 7th, or I'm sorry, July 11th of 2022, uh, Ms. Donovan. And uh, when was she placed on the SCRAM and why? Uh, SCRAM was a condition of her bond when she was released uh, from custody after being arrested on the first warrant. And when she appeared for the warrant to show cause hearing on that first warrant and the court reinstated her, the court required that SCRAM remain a condition of probation. Okay, and um, so she's on the SCRAM um, as a basically continuation um, of, of, of her bond. And then uh, um, you had written up an addendum to your original warrant, which the bulk of which talks quite a bit about um, SCRAM violations. Are there any other violations in there that are not related necessarily to the SCRAM unit in your original warrant? The initial warrant is related to SCRAM and alcohol violations. Okay. And did she make any admissions to you about alcohol violations? At what point? While she's being supervised by you since July of 2022. Yes. And when were those? I'm going to have to review um, my notes here. Her file is uh, very extensive as okay. there has been a lot of activity. <laughs> okay. And basically, I'm, I'm asking for specifically when she has um, made admissions uh, and, and, and either personally to you or signed admissions that you have documentation of. Sure. Thanks. And Your Honor, while she is reviewing that, it's my understanding that Miss um, 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 Moore um, is getting on from electronic monitoring. And go ahead, Christine. Uh, so we can come back to the, yeah, go ahead. Okay, well, as to the signed admissions, those are the ones we reviewed initially. Those would have been on February 6th and March 3rd of this year. 2023. Those are the made admissions of alcohol use. Yes. Okay. Um, six and March what? February 6th and March 3rd. Okay. She said on both those dates and in writing that she had used alcohol. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you, Ms. Norris. And in addition to that, I have three Wichita Police Department cases indicating. Objection here, say, Your Honor. Are you objecting to the Wichita Police Department cases or to what yes. she has not yet said? I do not object to the February 6th or the March 3rd, since those are admissions directly by Ms. Barnett. Anything that would be contained within a Wichita Police Department report would be hearsay, object to hearsay. Okay, but you're not objecting to the fact that she has Wichita PD cases. That, that she has good. pending matters, I don't think is relevant either so much because they're pending. So it's, I guess it's, it's the relevancy is not there either. Well, let's let Ms. Norris follow up on that. Maybe she can connect that. 
And, and Christine, just, uh, I guess, maybe explain a little bit without going into information that's in the police reports, but you're mentioning police reports. Why? Uh, they involve the defendant. And... They uh, regarded contact with the police and her that indicated she was under the influence. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Sustained. Okay. Now, um, has she been reporting to you? Uh, since she was placed back on probation with you since in, in July of 2022? Yes. And how often and how is she reporting? She has uh, reported by um, FaceTime, telephone. Uh, she has reported um, in person in Sedgwick County and Thus, that is why I said we are communicating quite frequently with the CSO there. Okay. Uh, she has reported very frequently because there has been so much going on with her case. Um, so it's not only scheduled appointments, but just continuous contact for various reasons. Okay. And did uh, the defendant inform you of her contact with law enforcement or did you find that out some other way? Objection, um, Your Honor. It's not an allegation contained within this hearing. It would be irrelevant to the warrant to show cause. Overruled. Miss Donovan? Um, on some of the occasions, she did notify me. Um, on some of them, I learned um, uh, through other ways. Okay. And um, your uh, biggest concerns um, regarding this defendant and what you think is most appropriate? at this time for her? Um, well, this is a second uh, inpatient treatment program during her probation term since I have been supervising her. And I have worked with her extensively um, trying to help her um, seek out services and get well. And she has gotten into treatment again the second time after all of these things have occurred, um, but was somewhat resistant initially to following through. Um, so she's, she's currently in treatment now? Yes. And you're saying that she went into treatment after this March 3rd? Um, admission of uh, drug and alcohol usage? Yes. And I will say that she actually had a bed date prior and did not go when scheduled. Um, so as I said, I've been trying to work with her. However, it has been somewhat of a struggle because she had been resistant. Uh, she did finally get into inpatient, which is in my judgment where she needs to be. Um, but one thing we didn't mention was that, um, after a prior violation last year, a modification order was done for her to go into inpatient, uh, treatment back on October 31st of 2022, um, due to alcohol violations and scram violations at that time. Um, she did go into treatment and complete a program. She completed two weeks of inpatient. 
um, and was discharged to outpatient um, and then struggled on outpatient and basically quit attending. Um, and thus she's in inpatient now. Um, but it has um, been constant alcohol violations, um, concerns about her well being. Um, I have had to call and request a welfare check. Other people have called to request as well. Objection, uh, hearsay. All right. So, so sustained to other people, but overruled to Miss Donovan's two calls to. Did I understand you made in the calls to welfare check? Yes, Your Honor. Um, uh, the defendant, I understand, had been engaging in mental health treatment. Um, I was notified um, by Hunter Health that she had been attending mental health treatment as well prior to going into inpatient treatment. However, that has also been a big concern um, throughout this time. Um, like I said, I, I feel like she is probably where she needs to be right now, given all of the totality of what's occurred. Um, and again, I'm limited to tell you um, because of the hearsay rule, but there has been a lot. Okay. Um, thank you, Ms. Donovan. I don't think I have any further questions, but Mr. Patterson may have some follow-up for you. Mr. Patterson, cross-examination. No questions for this witness, Your Honor. All right. Any further evidence, Ms. Norris? Um, uh, yes, Your Honor. We would be calling Kelsey Moore with electronic monitoring. Please raise your right hand, Ms. Moore. You solemnly, do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. All right, thank you. Please proceed. Please state your name and occupation for the record. Kelsey Moore. I'm an electronic monitoring officer for the 13th district. <laughs> and Ms. Moore, are you familiar with uh, Megan Barnett? I am. And can you explain to the court uh, why you're familiar with her? She was placed on um, our program on a SCRAM unit back in May of 22. Okay, and and uh, uh, is uh, she still on a unit, or when did she stop being on a unit? Um, her end date was December twenty seventh of twenty two. Okay, and do you recall why that's the end date? Um, there was a motion filed. She was having some issues with her ankles and the bracelet. Uh, like some uh, health issues. Okay. Okay. As opposed to um, like electronic issues or whatever with the bracelet. Right. Okay. And uh, while you were supervising her from basically May to December, did she have violations uh, of the, uh, of the scram program? Was she compliant? Uh, no, she had multiple violations. Okay. And, um, like a couple violations. Um, um <clears throat> I can. We've got five alcohol consumption events and twenty-seven tamper events. Um, some of the tamper events were tampers with alcohol. Um, because scram, if there's a tamper involved and alcohol, they categorize it as a tamper because they will not confirm an alcohol consumption with a tamper. Okay. So, um, okay. That's, that's quite a few by vi violations uh, and tamper events. And uh, what can tamper events in include? So um, <clears throat> tamper is anything placed between the skin and the unit itself. Um, cause when the unit takes a reading, it, uh, it's taking IR voltage, it's taking temperature and it's taking alcohol. So if something's placed between the unit and the skin, the temperature changes, the IR voltage changes and the device recognizes a tamper. Okay. Katie, I'm going to stop you right there. It is not appropriate or acceptable for the lady sitting next to the defendant to be slipping her notes during this hearing. Unless she is co-counsel, attorney of law to Mr. Patterson, 
she needs to quit leading this witness and giving her notes. Now I see there are two more people present. Who are all these people sitting there with this defendant, Mr. Patterson? Well, Judge, I believe they're all personnel of the treatment facility. And in fact, the one next to her is her therapist who will be the next witness or the first witness I call. Well, then it's inappropriate for them to be slipping notes back and forth. Maybe we need to have these witnesses sequestered if they're, if they're going to keep slipping her. Yeah, Judge, I think she will sit back and far enough that she's blurred out and wait to be called. All right. Well, I don't want any more of this slipping notes back and forth. That's inappropriate. She wouldn't be allowed to sit at council table and do that if this were a live hearing, and she's not going to be allowed to do it at a at a uh, Zoom hearing either. All right, go ahead, ladies, if you remember where you are. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, so you had said, um, we were just talking about what included a, a tamper event, and then you said, an al and how many alcohol events? There were five confirmed consumption events. Um, and I think I was tallying it, there was close to 20 of the tampers 20 out of the 27 tampers were tampers with alcohol. Okay. And um, from uh, July 11, 22, to when you said that she was off of this grant program in uh, late December, were those in, those in that time frame? There was one tamper May of 22. The rest occurred after September 17th of 22. Okay. Okay. So basically everything, most of the ones that you, that you have and that we've been talking about, they all happened after, uh, after July of 22, when she was placed back on probation. Correct. And um, what do you mostly do when uh, you get this information uh, do you contact the uh, the defendants, um, uh, the probation officer, all of the above? How do how do you kind of deal with these tamper and alcohol events? Uh, we do both. Um, with the alcohol events, they go straight to um, the CSOs. With the tampers, depending on if it's just a tamper or if it's a tamper with alcohol. On the tampers, typically the first just tamper with no alcohol will warn the client to watch their clothing, make sure nothing's sliding between the unit and their bracelet. Um, and then after that, we start issuing violations uh, for any subsequent tampers after the first one that gets a warning. Um, now the tampers with alcohol, with her specifically, just they were day after day. I just ran a lump sum report and send it to Ms. Donovan. Okay. And um, when uh, defendants are in uh, programs, like say they're in treatment or something like that, do you guys uh, still have the, the unit on them or no? Yeah, so she was in an inpatient treatment somewhere. Um, I can't remember which facility she was in and she had called because the bracelet was irritating her. So I went out to the treatment facility and swapped at ankles and did a fit adjustment for her. Um, okay. So, in, and the only place that you generally remove that is when, when they're like in jail. Sometimes, um, if they're going to only be in jail for a couple of days, we just leave it on the jail, lets them wear it. Um, so if they're only going in for like a dip, we'll just leave it on during that time. Uh, the only time I'll take it off is with a judge's order because the judge orders it on a judge has to order it off. Okay. Um, Thank you, Ms. Moore. Uh, I don't think I have any further questions, but Mr. Patterson may have some follow-up, okay? Mr. Patterson, cross-examination. Thank you, Judge. Um, Ms. Moore, I, I wanted to see if I could get, first of all, a little bit more information on this tamper with alcohol versus just an alcohol. What, what's the difference in that? So if there's a just an alcohol, that means that the temperature stays steady 
right where the normal for the client. So when they're first placed on, we take what's called baseline readings. So it can tell where the IR voltage is supposed to be. And you you expect that to be even keeled because once it's on the client, it shouldn't vary. There shouldn't be anything moving that bracelet. Um, and so just an alcohol event, there's no tamper. The temperature is the same. The IR voltage is steady and there's alcohol detected. Um, if there's a tamper with alcohol, then you're seeing that IR voltage kind of bounce around. The temperature's changed in one direction or the other. Um, so it recognizes it as a tamper, but it's still getting alcohol readings during that time as well. Okay. Now you stated that the monitor was removed on December 27th because of a health issue that had developed. Is that correct? Yeah, she was having, I think, sores on her leg um, from the unit. Okay. And it, and I'm looking at a report that indicates a substantial number of these incidents happened in December of 2022. Is that correct? An eight. I've got eight in December of 2022. December of 2022. Yeah, I've got eight. One of them being just alcohol, and then one, two, three, four, five, six being tampers with alcohol, and then one just being a tamper. Okay, and the tampers could that <laughs> have had anything to do with her health issue she was having that was leading up to the time to take it off? Uh, in a conversation. Uh, with her and she was placing a I believe a cloth between the bracelet and her ankle okay. um, when she would drink is what she had said and you stated that you then report these to the probation office is that correct yes do you also have a conversation with Ms. Barnett anytime these, these occur? We had talked to her a few times. Um, sometimes it, it wasn't the easiest getting a hold of her. Uh, we would call and she wouldn't answer. So we would text her and have her call us back. Um, we had talked to her, but if Christine had already talked to her, then I didn't talk to her as well. So do you talk to, to the clients and try and verify from them whether these are actual alcohol events or if something else was going on. So the company will ask if the company wants to know what the client's doing during that time that I tell them. Um, uh, then I'll ask the client, hey, what were you doing during this time and report back to the company. On these specific ones, they confirmed it um, just due to the data that that had been collected off of the bracelet. They didn't need to know what she was doing at that time. So she never was asked to confirm any of these. Um, I know I'd had conversations with her about, about them. Um, I never asked her if they were true or not. I don't think. Okay. No other questions. Ms. Moore, you said you don't know if you ever asked her if they were true or not, but yet earlier you testified that she told you when she was drinking, she would leave a cloth between her ankle and her bracelet. How do you right. justify both those answers combined? So I talked to her about the tamper, but yeah. I did not talk to her about the alcohol events he was asking about. I see. Thank you. Ms. Norris, any redirect? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Yes, Based upon the court's question, I guess I have one additional. The tamper, it sounds like, was a towel between the monitor and her ankle. Is that correct? Yeah, I believe that's what she'd stated, that she was putting that in between the, because there's the strap and then there's the unit part. And the unit part is what you can't put anything between. You can put stuff around the strap, but just not the unit itself. And was that in December that you were calling her and asking about that? I would have to look at her reports. There was 
quite a few. Let me ask in a different way. Uh, maybe this will help. Um, was she saying that she was using that towel between herself and the, and the monitor because of the health issues she had going on? No, not, not at that time. Um, she had started to wrap the strap due to her sores. Um, and I told her that was fine as long as it didn't get into the unit itself. Yeah, no other questions. But again, she said she was doing it to when she was drinking. Right. Cause I had questions as far as the alcohol readings that were coming in on the tampers. Okay. All right. Anything from anyone else on this witness? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Thank you. Any, any further evidence for the state, Ms. Norris? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. Any evidence for the defense, Mr. Patterson? Your Honor, I would first call the therapist at Miracle's house, which I did not get her name. So I'd ask that she identify herself first. Okay. My name is Megan Pinkley and I'm an LAC here. How do you spell those names, please? M-E-G-A-N Pinkley, P-I-N-K-L-E-Y. And what was your title again? Uh, I'm an LAC. Which means? Licensed Addictions Counselor. Okay. And it will, you're with which organization? Miracles. Miracles. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Patterson. Judge, if I could ask that she be sworn in. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. And is there some way we can keep both you and the defendant on the screen? There we go. Can you see us? Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. And again, um, Ms. Pinkley, could you state your name for the record? Megan Pinkley. And you stated that you are a licensed alcohol counselor at Miracles. Is that correct? Licensed addictions counselor at Miracles. Very good. Thank you. Um, and then also, I wanted to find out how long have you been at Miracles? I started July 4th, 2022. And prior to that, what did you do? I was a behavioral health tech at a local hospital. Okay. Now, as a part of your work, at, and tell me, first of all, what is Miracles? It's a residential treatment facility for women dealing with substance abuse. Okay. And as a part of your work at Miracles, are you familiar with Megan Barnett? I am. And can you tell us when she would have um, entered into Miracles? She checked in on March 13th, 2023. And was that following any other type of treatment? I do not believe so. Yes. Um, and uh, when she first arrived, um, what was there an intake done? So she arrived five days prior initially, but due to being under the influence, she went to detox for five days and then came straight here. And then the intake was complete. Okay. And through the intake, what did you determine any course of treatment would be? Um, she would continue with level 3.3, which is inpatient treatment for a period of 28 days. And then afterwards, we would look at um, outpatient treatment as a follow-up recommendation. When would the 28 days be finished? Uh, Monday, April 10th. And up to this time on March 27, could you give us a summary of her treatment and how she's done? Sure. So she has done well. She met with me. We meet weekly uh, at least. We've established treatment plans and attack tasks for each goal that she has been working on through our program. She's attended all the groups that she has been asked to attend. Um, she's been attentive to court dates and things like that. So, so far, she has done everything that we have asked her to do for treatment. And I know this is a tough question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, do you have a prognosis on her? Um, I don't 
I won't give you like a, a firm answer because it's substance abuse, right? We never know. But what I can say is that when she did enter, she was um, resistant, not super excited to be here, but she has opened up to the idea that there may actually be issues that she has that she needs to address in order to protect her sobriety moving forward. And going forward with the time that she is at miracles, what are the, what's the plan for her? I am going to recommend that she attends level one outpatient treatment with the potential for level two, if she seems to struggle Um, I'm also recommending that when she leaves here, she immediately gets involved with sober living. Um, So continuing with her mental health, um, getting a mental health evaluation and following through with those recommendations, following through with outpatient recommendations, and as well as sober living, I think that that will be the best scenario for her when she she exits our program. And what is sober living? We haven't uh, decided exactly where she's going to go, but it's going to be either a sober living facility or like an Oxford house, something like that. We haven't really narrowed down exactly, you know, what she would prefer. You mentioned that there would be a mental health evaluation. Has she done anything with that to get an evaluation yet? She has not. She has been uh, very verbal about wanting to get one while she's here. However, with our um, staffing issues, we are not able to facilitate getting them in some cases to come here to get that mental health evaluation. But her and I have been in communication about making sure that we have that settled and scheduled for as soon as she gets out of here. So she can she can go and get that done and, and follow through with what's recommended. Now, you stated that it could be level one or level two outpatient. Could you tell us the difference in those two? I'm going to start recommending with level one, which is two groups a week and a meeting with her counselor. However, if she has trouble, she's going to be encouraged to verbalize that. And then if we need to bump her up to more intensive, which is going to be three groups a week and a counselor, that's an option that she has. And how long are those usually in length? Usually it's a 12 week session. So three months, depending on her ability and attendance. No other questions, Your Honor. Ms. Norris? I just wanted to confirm, I wasn't sure if I quite got the date. Uh, when did she come into the program there at Miracles? Let me confirm. I'm, I'm almost positive it's March 13th. Yeah, she checked in on March 13th. Okay. Um, uh, nothing further, Your Honor. Uh, thank you. I guess, Judge, one more question based upon that. You stated that she came in on the 13th. Did that include the five days or not? It does not. That does not count towards the 28-day program. The five days of detox prior was on her own. Which would have been, my math is right, uh, March 8th? Correct. Okay. Nothing further. Thank you. You said she'd been attentive to court dates. How many court dates has she had? Because I think this is the first one she's had scheduled uh, with me March since March 13th. She has another court uh, date. Something with Sedgwick County. And she had an original date. Um, I believe it was last. Was it Tuesday? Mm-hmm. And then it we we she showed up and then they needed a letter and then so they went Wednesday and then she showed up again and they continued it to this Wednesday. So she, the Wednesday of this week, two right. days from now. Okay. All right. Anything else anyone wants to ask her based on that? No, no. Your Honor. Okay. Any further evidence, Mr. Patterson? No, Your Honor. All right. Both parties rest. Any arguments or recommendations, Ms. Norris? Uh, Your Honor, we have arguments. And um, uh, do you want uh, sentencing recommendations at this yes. time? Yes, because I do find I do find that the defendant has violated her, her probation. And I would point out that it is she had a revocation in July. She had a modification in October based on continued use between July and October. And she was recommended, ordered at that time in October to do treatment. 
That was October. And now here we are back on our, our uh, second revocation where she's clearly tampered with her device, clearly continued to use right up to being in need of detox March 8th. So it is clear to this court that she has violated her probation and uh, is in violation. So recommendations on disposition, starting with you, Ms. Norris. Your Honor, I would be recommending um, that the court do a 12 month extension of her probation for her to complete uh, these treatment programs that uh, seem to be uh, being recommended from uh, both the counselor here and I do believe that Ms. Donovan uh, mentioned some treatment as well. Uh, I do believe that she needs uh, some a jail sanction. Um, and I think uh, I'll leave it to court's discretion on when you want her to serve it. But I think um, I think 10 days in jail is appropriate based on uh, the fact that this is her second um, probation violation, uh, rather significant probation violations. And we didn't even make it a year um, before she had significant issues. Um, and so we will be requesting that and the court will need to, I don't think the court needs to address attorney's fees. I think once Mr. Patterson's on, he's kind of on. So I, I don't think the court needs to address any additional fees at this point. Thank you. Mr. Patterson. Thank you, Your Honor. Judge, um, I would ask the court to consider continuing the case for disposition. The court's already made findings that there's been a violation. I can tell the court why, and I, I think you've probably heard this from me before, um, even before you took the bench, that um, always, for one, trying to keep the people's feet to the fire, that uh, while they are doing the right thing, to make sure they continue to do the right thing, make sure they know that uh, there's a little bit more that uh, is at risk. And of course, at a disposition on a warrant that's already been decided, the risk is um, a sanction or serve the entire sentence. Um, the treatment she's in apparently seems to be one that she has um, followed through with at this point. Um, as I think uh, Ms. Pinkley said it best um, when requested about a prognosis, well, this is addiction treatment. Um, meaning that uh, um, it's, it's an up and downhill battle for clients that uh, they uh, um, have times where they're doing well, but they also then fall back. That, that's just the nature of the beast on addiction treatment. But she's doing well right now. She should know that doing well can be the difference between her staying out of jail or serving an entire sentence. And judge by continuing disposition, that would really help us out to make sure that she stays on the right track, gets into this uh, sober living environment, continues with her mental health evaluation, knows that she's got to do all these things for the court to come back and show the court that she's done these. So I guess my initial re request would just be to ask the court to continue disposition to get further reports of completing miracles, as well as her updates on where she's at. In lieu of that, Your Honor, um, I have not said anything to Ms. Barnett would lead her to believe that a sanction is not something that's probably going to happen. I mean, uh, sanctions as a result of probation violations are um, something that uh, helps them maybe get better on probation. So, Judge, I would tell the court that whatever sanction the court would deem appropriate, I know that uh, Ms. Barnett would accept the court's ruling, but we just ask the court to allow her to complete miracles prior to that time. Thank you. Ms. Donovan, what do you recommend? Your Honor, I would concur with Mr. Patterson. I feel like... Um, Ms. Barnett is on the right path right now. However, she's still in a structured living environment. Um, having another court hearing uh, to assess her progress might be beneficial for her, might be another incentive or reason um, to stay on the right track. Um, 
as I said, we worked with her previously. She's been back to court. She's been to inpatient. She's been an outpatient. And now she's back in court again. Um, so she has continued to struggle. And I just think that anything we could do to help her at this point for accountability might be a good thing. Um, hopefully she will get into sober living upon release and we'll continue on that path. But again, I, I would agree. Thank you all. Miss Barnett was found driving on June 21st, 2022 on a public roadway in Butler County, Kansas over twice the legal limit of 0.08, specifically at 0.172 BAC. She has been on supervised bond, followed by probation ever since June 26, 2022. She was in violation during her bond. She was sent in September 20th, 2021 for six months. Her probation, she was found in violation of her probation yet less than a year later, July, 2022. Her probation was revoked, but reinstated after she served I believe it was a few days maybe in jail, I don't recall, but as a sanction. That was July by October. She was still using, but rather than coming in on a full-blown revocation, she consented to do treatment for continued use. That didn't happen. Uh, Right away, somewhere along the way, she tried a treatment, but apparently that didn't work out. And we come back here on this revocation, her second revocation, since she was sentenced. She's been on electronic monitoring a good portion of that time as well. And she either can't or won't quit using. And I suspect, as folks have said, it's got to be an addiction. Uh, the way she's consuming and violating. Yeah, she served 48 hours from the July 11th, and then she went back on to probation and violated her scram by October. And it was only removed, the scram was only removed in December because of uh, problems with her leg. Who knows how the results would have been from December to now, but I don't think anyone in earshot of this hearing or participating in it can fail to see the strong addiction this woman has to alcohol. And I noticed throughout this hearing, her probation is, her probation officer has emphasized how much she needs treatment, how many health there have been uh, welfare checks made on her because she's obviously got at least Miss Donovan and it hinted at maybe a lot more concern that she's going to do herself in with alcohol consumption. Five alcohol uses. 27 tampers with alcohol between July and December, five months. Miss Donovan said, oh, no, I believe it was Miss Moore mentioned that day after day they had issues. She even admitted that when she drank, she would deliberately put the cloth between her ankle and her bracelet, trying to apparently and obviously distort the results. 
when she even went into this treatment. Ms. Pinkley said she was resistant. She arrived and needed five days of detox before she could start the treatment 14 days ago. But she did make it through detox and she has apparently made it 14 days into treatment, which seems to be a tremendous step since that day in 2021 that she was arrested. Finally, maybe a breakthrough. Finally. And then she's got something going on in Wichita, Sedgwick County, that we don't know about, but it's obviously something enough that she's been going back to court for. You know, normally when somebody violates their probation to this condition, it's serve your time. But in this case, it's obviously an addiction, a very deep addiction. And, and again, if she weren't starting to show some concern and effort, I might still say, serve your time. But because she is now trying, and maybe now for the first time in years, she's got a real chance at getting a grip on this addiction and being able to contribute to, to uh, society and not be a law violator. And I know two weeks, that may be uh, too optimistic to make all these conclusions, but it, it is a huge step. So for this reason, I am going to follow Ms. Norris's recommendation that we reinstate her probation for 12 months. But this is conditioned upon you, Ms. Barnett, completing successfully every step, every inch, every direction that you receive at Miracle House. Because it is a miracle that I'm not just outright revoking your probation. It is a miracle that you've got a chance at straightening your life out and kicking this horrible addiction that's had such a grip on you that it's controlled your life and potentially killed people with a DUI if you've been in the wrong minute of your addiction and driving. There will be some jail sanctions, but I'm going to also take Mr. Patterson and Ms. Donovan and I think Ms. Pinkley's advice and hold off on further orders until you complete miracles. And that includes not only their inpatient treatment, but their outpatient as well. So I want you to completely graduate from inpatient. And then I want you to completely graduate from outpatient, following whichever one they want you to start with. Now, they like to start with, it sounds like, least restrictive and work their way up to most restrictive. I'm probably just the personality type. I'd say let's start with the most restrictive and work back. But that's their call to make. You really open up to those people at Miracles. You really take their advice because this is probably the last chance you're going to get before a lot of other things start happening if you don't. Okay. If you want a good life, you want to get your life back and get out of trouble, listen to them. Also, I want you to stay in touch with Miss Donovan. She's still your probation officer for the next year. And I want you to sign any releases or any documents she needs so that she can keep constant tab on you and make sure you're toeing the line and doing whatever else you need to do. All previous conditions will remain in place. And if you need Ms. Donovan to review those with you, I'm sure she can do that. Ms. Donovan, should I set this for a definite review date or a sanction date? Or do you want to keep me posted and, and let me know when to set that? What do you prefer? Your Honor, if the court is wanting to wait until she completes, all recommended treatment, that might be a ways down the road. Okay. Um, should, should we maybe review it at the end of the inpatient? 
that would probably be appropriate. We would know a plan for her at that point. Of course, that's going to be, and that's only going to be, you said 28 days. And judge, I guess what I would judge, if we could review it, not only after inpatient, but a period of time to see if she's following through with the outpatient sober living and, and mental health evaluation. So maybe 30 days after she completes her inpatient, if the court would consider that. Well, let, let me think. Okay. It was a 28 day inpatient and she's already got two weeks down on that. And then it was going to be a 12 week outpatient. Is that right, Ms. Pinkley? That's correct. So is, what do the parties think about setting this out? And, and that includes you, Ms. Donovan, your recommendations, setting it out for about a 14 week review that let her finish outpatient and finish in or finish inpatient and outpatient. What, what, give me some feedback on what you think about that, Ms. Norris. And you know. Your Honor, uh, maybe mid-June. Is that what that calculates to? Probably, okay. Mr. Patterson. I'm Judge, I'm more for 45 to 60 days out just so it's sooner than later so that we just keep, so that Ms. Barnett keeps yeah. it in mind that we okay. have a hearing coming up. That is a good point. We do, as you said, keep your feet to the fire. So what are you recommending? 45 to 60 days from now. Ms. Donovan, are you okay with that? Does that make sense? Yes, Your Honor. I think that's appropriate. Okay, so then Savannah, that puts it on you to find me a hearing date about 45 days out, 45 to 60. No more than 60, no less than 45. There's a job. Sorry, I can do June 5th. Okay. That's not too far from Ms. Norris's recommendations either. So June 5th at uh, 9 a.m., Thank you, Judge. Okay. Does that work for everyone? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Norris or Ms. Donovan, when do you want her to contact you again or what's the, the plan? Your Honor, uh, if she could please contact me prior to her release from inpatient so that I know her whereabouts, if she is going to a sober living home or where she will be, that would probably be best. Okay, that's an order. Okay. All right. Thank you all very much, Ms. Barnett. I hope this all works out real well for you. Thank you. Keep up the effort. It's a good work.